Hi, I'm Phil Kay. Uh, I've been invited here today to present the next episode in the series of How to DJ. The first episode with Sarah was really, really good. Um, I'm here to expand on some points that she made and just take it to the next level to be rocking some dance floors. So here we go. Okay guys, so before we can move on, we're just going to recap one of the most important parts of mixing and that's the beats, bars and phrases which Sarah showed you in the last episode. I've already queued a track here and we're going to run through the whole 8 bar thing again, 32 beats and we're going to count it and we're just going to go through some tips on how to actually judge where that number one beat is and where the number one phrase is. So here we go, starting at 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 1, 2, 3, 4. So that comes into the bass line. Now, in a real world situation, you're not going to really be sitting there counting bars and phrases. You're just going to be able to work out where it feels right and where it's going to happen. What I'll be listening for is reverse cymbals. Uh, drum rolls or anything like that which is guiding me to where the next phrase is going to start right now. There's one again. So it should be pretty straightforward. If you listen to a lot of music you should be able to feel where it is. Now that we all understand that and I hope you all do, we can move on to the next level. Okay, the next feature I'm going to talk about is time remain and time elapsed. It's a really basic feature. It just shows you how long a track's been playing for or how long it's got to play. Now, this is the track I'm going to be mixing, mixing out of. So this is the track that we're playing. This is the track I'm going to be mixing into. Okay, what I did, I've already queued these up. These are ready to go. What I did, when, what I noticed when I was queuing up, and this is what you really need to pay attention to when you're listening to stuff in your headphones, is when stuff happens, is when a bass line comes in or where the track drops out in its first drop. In this case, what I'm going to do is I want to mix the track, and if you look and look at the waveform closely, you can see it's all chunky, a big fat wave of sound up until this point here, and at that point is when I want this track to come in on its own. And at that point is at the one minute mark. And I've done that so that I don't have to waste your time. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to play this track about a minute and 15 seconds before it finishes. And I'm going to start this track playing and you'll see what happens when they all happen at the same time and how great they sound. So here we go. Okay, that is now at 117. And I'm just waiting for the one minute mark to let this one go. Now it's kind of estimated, and the reason it's estimated is because there's crashes and things like that. So here we go. It's at one minute now, so I'm guessing it's going to be round about here. Okay, so those tracks are now mixing. I'll bring the level up. Now they're sounding really good together, and I'm not really having to do much adjusting. Now what I like about this method is that if you get this right, there's not really that much you have to do. Like, watch my faders. I'm just sort of adjusting this one ever so slightly. Slight nudge. Okay, so I'm going to leave them there. What, notice there's no EQs, I'm not touching anything. And right about now... And you can see the levels are still up. This track is now playing on its own. I haven't really done much adjusting, if anything. And it was a perfectly timed mix. So that's how to get stuff sounding really well timed. And it will help you, it will make sure that you don't have to play with EQ or levels too much simply by timing your mixes correctly. So now that we understand that, we can go on to the next level. Okay, what we're going to talk about now is an amazing feature on CDJs called looping. Now looping is something that I've always wanted to, to be able to do and that was back in the day when I used to play vinyl. And it's either to either help me get out of a track that hasn't really got an outro 
to mix with. It allows me to extend sections of records that aren't long enough, that I feel aren't long enough, or you know that the crowd's really loving. Or more often than not, it helps me um, when I run out of time uh, of, on a given track. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to actually do a loop. And the section that I want you to pay attention to is around here, the loop start and the loop end. But let's start this track. I'll do one beat loop. Here we go. Now what I can do with this is I can actually shorten this loop and create an effect with it. And what I'm doing now is creating almost like a drum roll. And then to get out of the loop, I press this. And it takes me back to the loop point where I, where I started. Now what I want to do is actually mix out of the loop. So I'm going to create another loop that I can mix out of. Seven, eight. Now that's it's an eight beat loop that I've created. And you can hear right at the end it's not actually looping correctly. What I'm going to do is edit this loop, like what I did before, but at a much smaller scale. So I hit the out button which allows me to get into the edit feature. And looking at my frames per second and listening to what I'm doing, I'll adjust this by one frame at a time. One frame again. Okay, that's a bit tighter. So what I'll do now, I'll try that again, one more frame. That sounds better. Now, I'll put that back into loop mode, instead of edit mode. And I'll mix over the top of it. And there you have it. I'm just mixing one track over a loop. So that's how you mix over top of loops. Okay, so we've spoken about looping on a CDJ, and looping on a CDJ is great, but if you really want to mix and get really accurate loops, the best way to do it is to do it on, with a feature called Roll on the DJM mixers. Now, Roll was initially invented for effects like this. Now, I'll adjust the roll by just going to fractions and going... Okay, so that was, that's what the roll was initially invented for. But what you can do with the roll, and what a roll actually does technically, is it just repeats a section of music. So you can turn this feature into a sampler, and a loop sampler, and it's going to be much more accurate than you at creating a loop because it knows how fast the track's going, because it's got a beat counter, and then it's a dividing, dividing a number to, to work out how many milliseconds it's got to sample for at 128 beats per minute to create a, mil to create a, a four beat loop. So let's do a four beat loop now. And that's the four beat loop. And let's try to mix over the top of that. And there you have it. Now I'm going to give you some tips on playing out on your first gig, which is really, really important. Um, the first thing you need to do, I guess, as, as someone that's playing in a, in a new club that you haven't played at before, is do some reconnaissance. Go to the club, go there a week, two weeks before, stay there, have a few drinks, have a listen to what's going on. It's really important. 
this is how you're going to gauge what goes on at that club, what you'll be able to get away with, what you won't be able to get away with, and how you'll be able to incorporate your style and be able to bring out your character in, in what you're doing. So go to the club, go there, have a listen and, and, and take notes. Um, so when you go home, uh, try and find similar music that you heard. You don't have to find the exact music that, that's been getting played. That's not the point. Otherwise, they wouldn't want you to DJ there. You need to inject something that is your own, that is you into that, but without alienating people. So there, that's the first point. Go check out the club. Second point, when you get there, if you're nervous, calm down. It's all good. Have a drink. Do something. You just need to relax. And that is you know, a big part. I mean, I still get nervous today, and that's 20 years later. So I can say it, and I can tell you, you will get nervous, and you always will get nervous when you value what you do. So don't, 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 be, don't, don't be scared of that. Next thing you need to do is you need to be prepared. You need to have certain things with you that's going to make your life easy. Now, the first thing you're going to need is probably a torch. You may not need it every single time, but you're going to need a torch. So make sure that you, you carry a bag or carry a bag for your headphones. That's probably the best bet. Put your headphones in a little bag and put the torch in that bag. So wherever you go, you've got your headphones and you've got your torch so that you can see what you're doing. Because a lot of places you can't see. If you can't see, you don't know what you're, you're, not, you don't know what you're going to be up, um, playing. The other thing that you, you need to be prepared with is music and a lot of music. You need to, you need to be prepared with different styles or different records. Maybe the nights that you went were really good nights. Maybe there was good people in the club. Maybe the night you're going to play might be a little bit down. So the music might have to change. It might have to be a little bit more commercial. You need to have those kind of records with you. So you need to be prepared musically and, and, and for emergencies because sometimes you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you might get some requests that you may not necessarily want to play, but hey, if that's what's going to get the room going, that's really what you need to do. And if it's your first gig, you want to impress. You can't just, you know, pretend that, oh, I don't have that record and not worry about it. You really have to impress. So they're, they're the, that, that's the first bunch of things that you can do when you, when you first get a gig and how you can go there and, and be successful. Okay, so now that we've explained beat looping, what we're going to do now is something called breakdown looping. Now, breakdown looping is a bit more of a forgiving loop because there's no beats there to kind of clip at the end. So let's do, let's do a breakdown loop and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the breakdown of this track. So what I'm going to do is do a full beat. And that, you can hear, already sounds pretty clean. And automatically, I can drop this beat over it and make it sound really cool. And here we go. And that's really tight. You can expand on that a little bit and make it become a little bit silly by putting a delay on that, on echo, on that beat. What I try to do is usually use about a three quarter echo and adjust it to adjust it to that track and use the forward reverse and at this point you can get really fiddly you can start playing with a platter forward reverse the whole time EQ out. And volume now. So that's breakdown looping. The next thing I'm going to talk about is something called a spin back or a throw back. Um, it's used to great effect if used right. It's a really simple thing to do, but something that you can overuse, so be really careful with it. So instead of talking about it, let's just do it. Here's the track that's going to end. So this is the outgoing track. Mix into this track. Track 
Max mixing. Now what I'm doing to get set up before the spin bat is slowly start winding the bass out and a little bit of the gain. And just at the end of the phrase, and it's just gone into the bass line. So as you can hear, it's a really nice transition. Not too long, not too fancy. And the reason I've adjusted the gain in the bass is that it doesn't become overpowering because once you spin it back, that becomes a louder sound. So that's the way to do a spin back. A really important part of beat mixing is actually mixing frequencies together and making sure that frequencies ain't clashing um, because that creates really muddy mixes. And what you have on most DJ mixes that you find out there today is a bank of knobs at the top end of the mixer. Um, and usually the top one will be called gain, which is a fancy word for volume. So if you turn that right down, there'll be no volume. But what we're interested in at the moment is these three, three knobs here for each individual channel, which are labelled low, mid and high. Now it's very self-explanatory if you've got any kind of EQ on, on any system, it's, it's the same thing, but it's just on knobs here. Um, so yeah, the high end or the highs are going to cut out the, the high frequencies, like the cymbals in tracks. The mids are going to cut out, you know, the synth lines and the vocals. That's where that's that's the frequencies that, that those parts of elements of tracks take up. And the bottom end is is the fun bit, the bass, the kick drum, and, and the, the the thing that makes people go crazy. So, you know, once you've got control of those those elements, you can you can then say, okay, the one the track that's going out, I don't want it to have any more vocals, or I don't want that synth to be there, and I'll just kill the mids, or you know, I don't want the hi hats to be going as hard anymore, so I'll drop it back. So. Let's stop talking about it and let's just see what they do when I play with them. So this is the highs. So I take all the hi-hats out now. So it becomes a duller track and I can, at this point, when I'm playing the next track, I can let the hi-hats from the next track taking over. So I'll bring them back in. And I want to take the synth out here, so let's just drop that whole synth line out. You can kind of hear it, but it's more in the top end frequency of that synth line. But the bass and kick drum is still there. And at this point, if I wanted to kill the kick drum, I wanted to kill the whole bass and leave everything else running, it will be like this. So all you've got now is the mid and the high. The beat's gone, the bass is gone, even though the bass is still in the track, but I've just killed it. So when you've got such control of each frequency, you can make your track sound, or your mixer sound really, really smooth. So let's, let's look at how EQ is used to adjust frequencies when you're mixing two tracks together. I'm gonna play, I've got two tracks set up, I've got them in loop and I've got them in sections of the record which are quite full, so there's lots of frequencies going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this one which has got the bass line, the synth line, the hi-hats, the kick drum, everything. And I'm slowly going to mix this one in. But what I'll do to begin with, just so it doesn't come in so harsh, I'm going to drop the bass of this and then start the mix. You can hear that the hi-hats have come in. Now slowly, Oh, I can do it. I can do it. Suddenly as well. I'll do this as suddenly so you can really hear it. I've just changed the two bass lines. I'll just change them back. Change them slowly. Just adjusting to get it right. Now slowly, I'll just bring this out. Take the hi-hats out. So I'm slowly bringing the track out by, not just by simply using the volume, but by using volumes on frequencies. And that's essentially what EQ is. It's a volume over certain ranges of frequencies. Now if you watch DJs like Stacey Pullen or Derek May, 
They're the ones that do it the best. So that's using EQs to mix with. What we're going to talk about now is how to get some experience. The best way to do this, there's a couple of ways of doing it. The first way is to go out and find the clubs that are playing the kind of music that you're into and the kind of music that you'd like to play. Go to those clubs and mingle with the people. Find out who's putting on the parties. Give out CDs to the people that go to the club. Give out CDs to the promoters. I mean, that's one way. Then get online, do marketing, upload your mixes, get people to download them. Just build your reputation, build your name. Now, the best way to get the experience is to do it yourself and to start your own nights. And a lot of successful people have started out like this. The way to do it is go to a local bar, get a night, book a night in, and try to get a couple of hundred of your friends to come out and party. And if you can do that once a month, then you've got your own night. And once you've got your own night, everybody wants to know you and people want to book you because you can pull a couple of hundred people to their club. And really, that's what it's all about. It's getting into the scene, creating a scene, becoming a part of a scene, and becoming successful. And that's the way that you're going to break into it. Okay, what we need to talk about now is something really important. It's about warm-up DJing. And warm-up DJing is what you're going to probably be having to do a lot of when you start off. And warming up is probably one of the hardest jobs to do and get right because it, it, it takes a lot of restraint from you as a DJ. Um, there's some tips that you need to follow to become a successful warm-up DJ. The tips are to play the kind of music that you would like to be listening to when you walk into a club, stuff that's not too fast and too loud and too abrasive or peak time music. You need to play subtle records, melodic records and stuff that's not too fast. I mean in a house club anything over 125 beats per minute wouldn't really be considered warm up. It doesn't really leave enough room. Your job as a warm up DJ is to build anticipation. You've got to make it feel like something's about to happen. But you're not necessarily going to give it to them. You're setting that up and that's why it is such a hard job because all the glory is taken by somebody else. But at the same time, if you do a really good job as a warm-up DJ, you get a lot of respect and because people do understand what a hard job it is to do. So do it and do it well and stick to it. Okay, so leading on from EQing, we're going to enter the world of effects, which is really exciting. And the first effect we're going to talk about is called filtering. Now, filtering has only been a new addition on DJ mixes in the last few years, but it's a really great way of, of EQing frequencies out of a track that you're mixing in or out of. Also, it's, it's great for creating an effect, um, which always gets a, a reaction on the dance floor. So without speaking about it, let's have a listen to, to filtering. Now, there's two types of filters. There's a low pass and a high pass filter and the filter on this, on this mixer is located right here and it says frequency. So let's turn the filter on and what we're going to do first, we're going to go anti-clockwise which is a low pass filter. And this is what a low pass filter is, let's go slowly. And let's take it all the way back. So what I've done there is I've killed all the mids and all the highs and all I've left in there is the bass. And I'll turn it back up and as I'm turning it back up you can almost hear a knocking sound as I'm sweeping because what I'm doing now is I'm sweeping through frequencies. And that, that's called resonance, what you hear in that little knock as I'm going up through the frequencies. Now I'll go the other way and I'll take it into high pass filter mode. And obviously it's going to do exactly the opposite of what I did earlier. And you can hear that still that knocking effect, that sweeping effect, that's the resonance again. So let's take this all the way to the top. And all you can hear there is just the slightest bit of the, of the, of the synthesizer top end and the hi-hats. And you can use this to great effect like... So yeah, you can get a lot out of that effect. That's filtering.
So a really exciting effect I want to talk to you about now is called Echo. Now this can be used in a lot of ways, but we're going to try and get into it really simply so that everyone can understand what's happening here. Now an echo is exactly what I'm saying, it's an echo. So I'm going to turn the music up here and I'm going to choose echo with the, with the effect selector right here. I'm also going to select what channel I want the effect on, in this case I want it on master, but I can also choose channel 2 and I'll leave it on channel 2. Now this is my wet and dry which means effect on or effect off in terms of volume and this is turning the effect on. So let's just turn the effect on with full volume. I'll turn the volume down of the effect. It's still there but right in the background. Now there's several interesting ways that I can use this. I can do one of these where I'll turn the volume up and as I'll turn the volume up to 12 o'clock I'll drop the volume of the fader. So let's do that one. Then, and it's echoing. And what I'll do now is one, two, three, four. So in my head, what's happening while I'm doing that is an internal count going on. I can hear the echo and I'm placing my count to that and then when I feel that it's the right time again, according to my count, I'll let the volume come back in. So that's really a simple echo on, it's called the 1-1 one, one echo. If you look at the screen here, you'll see that it's reading out at 127 beats per minute and it's saying 1-1. One, one. So that's a 1-1 one, one echo. Master Tempos is, is a really amazing feature that, that's been incorporated into, into the latest CD players and it's something that, again, you couldn't do with vinyl in the old days. It basically, what it allows you to do, it allows you to pit, pitch up or slow down a record without adjusting its pitch. So let's have a listen to what, what happens when a track is pitched up normally. And you can hear it. The vocal's starting to sound a bit Mickey Mouse. And it's obviously speeding up, you can hear that. And let's make it the other way. Right? So that's as far as it's going to go, minus 16%. Let's take it back to zero. Let's engage the master tempo. And let's take it fast. There's no Mickey Mouse happening on the vocal. The pitch is the same, it's a lot faster. Now I'm going to really quickly go the other way. Listen to the pitch. It's still the same and I'm taking it all the way to the slowest point it's going to be. Back to the middle. Back to the fastest. So it's a really great feature. The other, the other use for this is when you're using strings when you're mixing a track like this section. Watch when I speed it up. You can't hear the pitch. If I do it with the master tempo, often I do that. Master tempo? Nothing. So when you're mixing strings, that's how you do it. You use the master tempo and you can never hear yourself correcting. So master tempo is a really powerful and amazing feature. So to finish up, there's a couple of points I want to make about being a great DJ. And these points are reading the crowd and getting the crowd to trust your judgment and to inject your personality into it. Now the first thing is reading a crowd. Reading a crowd is simply that, is just watching and gauging the reactions of people of what you're playing. Once you've done that for a while, people can, you can actually judge what's going to work, what's going to kind of work or what's going to bomb. So what you want to be doing is you want to be playing a set that's constantly or gradually building up like that or you can choose to build a set 
that's kind of going up and down. And that's where you use those kind of records that are really big and records that are kind of just keeping the dance floor. And that's the way I like to play because playing big all the time, people know what's, what's coming next. When you're doing the roller coaster thing, people don't know what's coming. Now, once you can do that and you can do that successfully, people are going to trust you as a DJ. And once you've got people's trust, that's when you've got it. And that's when you can start becoming a really, really great DJ. Um, how, how to actually program once you've got people's trust is, is by playing the kind of records that, that you want to hear, the kind of records that are going to set you apart from everybody else and inject your personality into what you're doing. That's what's going to set you apart. That's what's going to make you sound completely different to anybody else. And that is ultimately what's going to make you successful.